So if you want to live in this world, then you also have to live in this world. And experiences and practices that take you out of this world into the so-called other world or into cosmic states are not going to help you to live better in this world, it doesn't make sense. I'm very grateful for this opportunity. I hope to express well my question because I'm not native in English language. I'm from Argentina and it's... I'm very confused because I was following... I am following the transmissions of another guru, but it's very chaotic and I don't know if it's the right guru. I don't know if I can say his name here because it's he's very known. He was one of the gurus that impulses people to not identify with the body nor the mind. I did a course with him. The whole course ended in the transmission of a Kriya. I did it for some time, but then I reached your videos. I saw that very people suffered a lot physically for doing practices that disturbed the Kundalini. And I think that could be one of that practices. And I don't know what to do because maybe I'm following him because of my ego, because it's ecstatic. I, can't, I could feel ecstatic sometimes, but I had an experience. I saw the suffering and the pain in other people, and I felt it as my own. I cried very much, like screaming at the very intense things with all these transmissions, or like uttering mantras that he gay he transmits like feeling a light or something like that but physically i don't know if this could be dangerous for me because all of what you said he talks about ecstatic way of being and you, you don't talk about um. an ecstatic way of being i'm just asking for clarity I, i'm confused i don't know if I should put my effort on getting away from that teachings. There are different ways and different paths that a person can take. In their search for truth or in their search towards understanding what this life is about, what this whole experience of living is about. And some people take up a spiritual path because they've been pushed into a corner by life and they have no other choice but to try to find out what this existence is about and try to put order in their lives. Other people take up a spiritual path because they want power over others. They want to be more powerful than others. They may feel disempowered, they may feel less than others and they want to gather power in some area of human endeavor and so they take up the spiritual quest. And there are others who take up that spiritual quest simply because they want to know what this existence is, what is the Truth. It is not a painful situation that's pushing them into it, it's not a need for more power, but simply a deep interest in existence and what it's all about. When you then, whichever of these three you are, when you take up a spiritual quest, you have to have an idea what actually you want from it, what is it that you want to know or expect to know. If you want ecstatic experiences, experiences of cosmic states um, moving into, into 
states which you don't even grasp or understand, which are outside your system, which are foreign to your system, which means that you are actually being catapulted through those experiences into cosmic states. You're not in the body, you're not present, your eyes open and very much here and now, but you're in those other states. Those are also experiences that human beings can have and they can be quite interesting. But the question is, are you looking at living in a cave somewhere, or outside the village in a little hut like a shaman, or a sadhu sitting in the Himalaya? What is it that is the calling within? Because if you want to live in this world, then you also have to live in this world. And experiences and practices that take you out of this world into the so-called other world, or into cosmic states, are not going to help you to live better in this world, it doesn't make sense. So if you have ecstatic experiences like, you know, many of the mystics did, great mystics who, who lived on their own, they were, they were used to the mystical experiences, they blessed people, they served people, they did all of that, but they were not of this world. If you want to be like that, if that's what's calling you, then it makes sense to take up those practices, but then don't expect to be able to live normally in this world, because what happens is that the Kundalini does get triggered in a lot of cases. Some people are able to adjust with it, some people are not. The Kundalini is always active in the system, but when you push through such practices, without the teacher being around in person, it's going to result in a triggering and that triggering means that the ego has grown to such proportions that the, the Shakti has to push against it. Resistances form in the different chakras and the Shakti is pushing against it and then there's pain in the system. So if you want to live, just to be in this body, here and now, eyes open, present, joyous, then wouldn't it make sense to be in surrender to the Truth of your system, because that's the only thing that can actually impulse you in the right direction, so that you don't move into the actions that are going to cause you suffering. I'm not saying that ecstatic experiences are not possible when you're in the here and the now, they are very possible, but they keep you connected with the here and the now, they're not taking you somewhere else. And the, the challenge is, when those experiences or chantings of those mantras or whatever it may be, take you somewhere else, then it is pulling you away from this world. And you are an embodied being, you've... There's a body here. So the more the awareness stays in the body, the more it is connected with the Truth within, the more everything it experiences is within the body, the more joy there is in the system, because that's why that embodiment has happened. So anything that takes you away into another space, uh, spaces you out actually, is not advisable unless you have a, a, a Guru, a teacher or a guide standing with you through those processes. And I mean also physically present. So when people do these courses, they are, they may have experiences, but if those experiences become strange, and are taking you away from this world, then you need to question if that is actually what you need to undertake. If you feel comfortable with it, that's fine, if you feel a discomfort, then it's not the thing to do. If you feel suspicious of what's going on, then it's better to stay away from it. Because if you trigger things, then after that, I don't think you're going to get much help anywhere. So it's about being in surrender. Why does one have to do anything if one can be in, in 
and surrender to the truth is just such an amazing state. To be in just normal here and now, just doing the things a human being does in the culture they are from, in the family they live in. Sometimes it's not possible to be close with the family, you may be somewhere else, all of that is there, but if you're going to be in ecstatic states and and sort of feeling the pain of the other to the point where you're actually screaming, then that is not any more in the realm of a simple, surrendered, embodied state. It is more the realm of the cosmic experience and also where the conceptual has been forced to its outer edges into what one can call madness or... Um, well, yes, that's perhaps the word one can use here. So all of that seems to be a very complex construct and it may be just simpler to just be here and now, humble, bending and surrender, trying to see which actions are coming from the ego, trying to find out and trying to go with the Truth impulse. Yes. Thank you very much. I'm very grateful for your presence here and your words. They are very helpful for me. Thank you. Namaskar, Mariana.